Hello 300 class, good to see you guys. We're going to start off with some self-defense practice with a partner. So find a nice partner at home, thank you. And uh, we're going to actually focus on some spontaneous practice. So some things I want to cover tonight with this. It's important that if it's, we're going to start with grabs first. It's important that you think about what you can strike with. So if they're holding your arms or your wrists, you might not be able to use that right away. So you have to think about using maybe your legs or your head or elbows, whatever you have free to strike with and try to launch more than one strike. If uh, we just use one strike, it might not be enough, right? So we want to try to multiple those strikes up and then we can work on escaping the grab and hold and then we can work on some follow-ups and then even into takedowns and, and controlling and choking and that type of thing. So I'm just going to ask my partner to give me some random grabs. So pick something. Perfect. So I do have my hands free here. So good strikes, find good targets to good uh, opportunities, right? And try to always keep one hand engaged so you can find all your options. All right, change it up, something different. All right, so I don't have my hands here. So obviously I have my legs, I can kick, I can start to break that grip, I can work into position there, right? Give me another one, you can turn me around if you want, yeah, whatever you want. Oh, good. So I do have my hands a little bit, so I do want to try to brace, then maybe I can push, work my punches to the ribs, strike to the groin, hit the throat, start to escape. Okay, and then we have joint controls, we can go into takedown position. So it's all situational, right? Okay, cool. Nice one. So I got one arm free, but it's a little bit tricky. So I might want to use my leg first, stomp to the knee, then I can start striking, and then I can turn, knee, elbow, work into takedown, work into choke hold. Okay. <laughs> Gonna get more aggressive. Okay, so bear hug's a good one. So maybe a heel kick to the groin, stomp in the foot, kick in the knee. I can work into striking. Notice how I hooked onto the bear hug, so if I feel her moving, then I, I want to try to escape. Work into my, I can hit my ribs, elbow, strike. I can off balance, that's always a good idea. Try to get to a, a choke hold, right? All right, one more. Ah, there's the full Nelson. Okay, so again, I don't have my arms yet, so I'll kick to the groin, strike to the knees, try to break that grip. If I'm striking with my elbows, I'd like to try to pull my arms across. I can work into a headlock, into a choke. I actually got my hand uh, holding her gi this time. I could choke her this way. I still have her arm, okay? So there's lots of options there. Remember, we are still on our feet. So I want to try to take her down, get on the floor, you know, pin, strike, uh, submit that way too. So, all right, we'll go. We'll do two more examples. So I can get something else here. Okay, so this is kind of a mutual position. A lot of times people think of grabs as a negative, uh, but I do know where her hand is, right? So that's a nice thing. I also know where her other hand is uh, available to strike me. So something like this is nice to be able to try to grab that. Now I can strike and, and she'll have to turn to get to me a lot harder. I can knee, I can start elbowing, I can work into a throw and take down, knee again. All right, last one. All right, so this is really good because now both hands are on me so I can do a lot of stuff. It's really easy. I can strike, strike, strike. I can, if I want to be real quick, I can be inside and grabbing and kneeing. And then I don't want to stay in front of them too long. I do want to start going into takedown position, right? So self-defense is always worse if you're in front of them. When you're on the side of them, you have a better chance. And if you're behind them, oh, that's, even, that's the best spot to be, right? So think about that as well as you're working your way around. If you can help it, try not to be face-to-face -face as much as you can. Uh, now, the next stage would be they're not just grabbing you, they're trying to swing at you or hit you, or, or they're trying to grab and hit you. So that's the, the next level now. So now maybe she starts throwing that wild swing, right? That's a common thing. The last thing I want to do is, is kind of just back up and, and give her more room to hit me, right? Because she has two hands, so if she misses, She's going to come at me more, and then I'm going to run out of room, fall on the couch, and then she's going to really slam me with that last one, right? So I want to, I want to go inside and try to stay close so I can elbow, 
use my striking, right? If I can wrap this arm up, that's good. It gets me farther away from the free arm. Then I can go for my takedown, slam her in the couch, right? So that making sense, I hope, at home. Uh, so if I stay here and I try to block that, that's good, but then I know that second one's gonna be coming. So I'd have to move into a safe position, right? So wherever I put my head is, is where she's gonna be next. So if she swings that first one, I wanna think about, she knows where I'm at, so she starts swinging, I gotta move to somewhere where she's not gonna anticipate me going, right? And then even if she knows where I'm at, then it's gonna be hard to hit me. So always think get inside if they're trying to hit you, and then you can work your position from there to off balance or counter strike and takedown, right? Really it's off balancing that's gonna help you a lot. Striking's gonna be uh, hard to do if they're trying to be aggressive with you. Um, another common one might be like a low punch to the body or like an uppercut, right? So that's a hard one to block. So I really recommend trying to move or, or jam it and clear it, but then you gotta go right back into your striking mode, right? You gotta be moving side to side. So again, if I get to the outside, that's a little better because I have uh, less of her other arm to hit me. And I can knee or sweep and take down, right? We all the options that we normally would. So when they're striking, it, it, it throws things off a little bit more, right? Uh, grabs are a little more predictable because you can feel things and they're just holding you more, uh, maybe just trying to pin you or, or uh, push you and shove you around. But when they're hitting you, there's a, bit of a faster threat, right? So something to, to practice with. And then, of course, you can mix up the grabs and the strikes. So uh, try that at home. Have someone just start grabbing you or pretend they're grabbing you, right? You don't need the partner. If you're at this level, you can, you can uh, understand. You can think about a double wrist grab holding your arms or you can think about someone with a bear hug on you or someone trying to punch you in the face. And it's actually good to imagine it because that the more you can get that picture in your head and, and, and picture where those arms are coming from, then when it's actually there, it's easy, right? And your mind just goes to the, the thought and doesn't have to think for too long. So thank you. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go into some kata next. So get ready, get some space at home. And uh, my goal is to cover three katas tonight. We're actually gonna do all the shodan katas. What I mean by that is we're gonna do taikyoku shodan, pinan shodan, and the hanchi shodan. And if you wanna do a bonus, the tosu lohai shodan would be in there as well. So we'll start. Taikyoku Shodan. Right? Joy. Low block. Punch. Turn. Low block. Punch. Now you're probably sick of doing this kata. So what I want you to concentrate on is making sure you're pulling your legs through the center and driving out. And every step should do that. In and out. Three and four. So really focus on that uh, the rest of the kata. One. Two. One, through the center. Two, look, one, two, three, four, through the center. Especially if your name is Jim McCormick. We love moving through the center, right, Jim? All right, spin, block down, punch, turn, block down, ki, and finish. Bow. So that's Taikyoku Shodan, focused on moving through the center. In Pinan Shodan, we'll work on our expansion and contraction position. So on our low block, we want to twist the hip and shoulder back. Try to start at the hip back as the shoulder is back as well. And then punch, when you're in punching position, your body's forward, hips are tucked, shoulders are straight. Turn, expand, hammer fist and contract, lunge, punch, contract. Twist back, now on this next move, it's a double action. I go forward and back with my hip. Up, then step two, twist through. Twist through three, and key eye four. Because of the key eye, my body's actually forward on this one. Turn, expansion, contraction. Expansion, contraction. Expansion, traction, double, key eye. Turn. Chop, chop. Now, think of this position as hips are back, shoulders are back too. But a back stance helps you do that easier. Now turn through the center, Jim, and hold. And finish. Bow. All right. One more for tonight. Nahanshi Shoda. 
Bow. Joy. Look to your right. Cross. Knee high. And block. Stop for a second. Make sure your horse stance is proper. Feet are parallel. Tucking your hips. Back straight. Then elbow. Pull. Low block. Hook punch. Look. Cross. Knee. Back fist. One. Two. Kick. Three. Kick. Four. Pull. And ki. Under. Root. One, two. Now on this low block, just like your other katas, expand the hip and shoulder, at least the shoulder as much as you can, then torque in on the punch. Look, cross, back fist, up, one, kick, two, kick, three, pull, ki, four, up, and down, and bow. And your homework after this video is to do that Itosa low I showed on that bonus one. See if you have it, that's the, the extra one. So hope you're uh, doing well at home. We'll see you soon. Thanks guys.